Kishimoto has been teasing Sasuke's death everywhere. From the opening scene of the Boruto series to his V-Jump interviews, he has given us some subtle hints for the passing of his OG character, and not everyone was able to catch them. Chapter 79 has enhanced the chances of Sasuke's death in the most unexpected way, and today we'll be figuring out how it would end up, along with dissecting the hints given by the author. So make that sub button disappear and let's begin. The demise of Sasuke Uchiha would break the internet. There have been some solid hints suggesting the master of Boruto shall die, and the very first one could be traced back to the opening scene of episode 1. Here, Boruto can be seen with Sasuke's cloak and sword. But let me tell you something interesting. The cape of Boruto was changed in the anime to match the one worn by his sensei, while in the manga, the color of the cloak was red from inside, which could mean that it belonged to Naruto in the pilot idea. Kishimoto had planned all of this from the beginning, and it could be that he wanted Kawaki to accidentally kill Naruto earlier. Boruto Naruto author had mentioned in one of his interviews that how he is okay with one of his Naruto characters who have always been around to die in Boruto. Some fans assumed he was talking about Naruto, while others argued it was a reference to Naruto as a series and its characters. Nevertheless, the audacity of the author to kill his OG characters must have some great planning behind it. The last three chapters of the prophecy arc have been taking everything away from Boruto in a rapid manner. First, he lost his parents, then his eye, and now his identity. There is a panel from the flash forward that has hasn't made it into the manga yet. It shows Gawaki in his second karma stage, looking down at somebody with blood on his face. So could it be that Sasuke has actually died while protecting Boruto? And if not, then how did Boruto end up in his outfit? Well, before figuring out whether it's actually Sasuke's outfit or not, let me tell you guys about the karma outfits from the Chaos Store, the sponsor of this video. When it comes to Boruto collections on the internet, Chaos has some of the most exceptional pieces. The karma jackets and trousers will give you an instant boost of confidence and make you feel like the hero of your own story. The build quality of the garments is way too elegant, which instantly made me a fan of the brand's unique design. You could choose between Boruto Kawaki and Code's Kama to shine on your apparel. Orders are only up for 3 days now, so hurry up and grab yours with the link in the description. Coming back to the fate of Sasuke Uchiha, if he actually gives his stuff to Boruto before the time skip, then it probably means he wasn't affected by Aida's omnipotence. But that's very less likely to happen, since he was shown to be a part of the anti-Boruto gang. Many people might argue that Sarada's immunity is a subtle hint for Sasuke being immune as well. I think I have finally figured out why the two girls were unaffected from Aida's power. So hear me out. We know that omnipotence comes from the deepest desire of an individual and Aida wanted the attention and love of everyone around her. Not to mention she was head over heels for Kawaki and there is no way she would have wanted love rivals in her story. If Sarada and Sumire were not immune, they both would have been in love with Kawaki instead of Boruto. It has to be the most sensible explanation for their immunity and it clearly has no ties with Sasuke. Let's assume for a second that is Ashura connection won't save him from the reality shifting. The other thing that many people are assuming could bring back his memories is the headband that he gave to Boruto a while back. We shouldn't forget that he talked about his final resolve after letting Boruto keep the headband for himself. So what if the resolve is to save his disciple from the one who has took everything away from him? The headband and the endeavor of his daughter to side with Boruto must have been the reason for Sasuke to trust them. Maybe after noticing a few more inconsistencies in the timeline, he would gain his memories back. Which brings us to the plans of Kishimoto for the end of his Ochi character. How possibly would Sasuke go down? Will he be having an honorable death or has he been sealed just like Naruto? Somebody pointed out in the recent remake of the opening sequence that Boruto hasn't perfected Kenjutsu yet. The way he attacked Kawaki, it felt like he was self-trained. Implying this detail with the ongoing events, we could conclude that Sasuke must have passed away. That's why Boruto decided to carry on his legacy. Not to mention it has fulfilled his desire to become just like him, a rogue ninja who's hated by the entire world. Now let's get into why I think it's actually Kawaki who killed Sasuke before the time skip. Remember the analogy of the Naruto series where a teacher is killed by his own student. Now that reality has been rewritten, Kawaki is technically the student of Sasuke and him killing his master for the sake of his father would make complete sense here. Not to mention Sasuke still has haters in the village, so some of them might even admire Kawaki for his actions. Kawaki will go down as the killer of his master just because he was siding with the traitor who killed his father. The common citizens have no idea about Naruto's fate, so it's very likely that he will be seen as the avenger of Konoha after this. For instance, what if Kawaki had actually killed Naruto and let's say Konohamaru would have sided for him for some reasons. Considering the huge power gap that he shares with Boruto, it would have taken him seconds to finish him off just to avenge his father. We shouldn't forget Kawaki does not share any bond with Sasuke, so it must be even easier for him to finish him off. The effect of omnipotence that has made Kawaki Sasuke's student will provide a rhetorical effect to his death. In the eyes of people, it would be a continuation to the Shinobi legacy, but in the eyes of readers, it's gonna be the beginning of the end of Shinobis. 
One of the reasons for the author to drop a canon side story of Sasuke could have something to do with his death too. The flashbacks of the Red Sudden could take place during the final moments of Sasuke when he will be recapping his entire life. Well, Sasuke is currently the most powerful shinobi in Konoha and he has a great degree of credibility as well. If the headband that he gave to Boruto would help him to regain his memories, it could create a huge problem for Kawaki. Sasuke could reveal the entire reality of omnipotence to the village in order to prove Boruto's innocence. Kawaki would obviously get insecure of the Uchiha's influence that would end up in him taking this dark step. Boruto using his stuff in the time skip reflects the amount of respect that he shares for him in his heart. The only person who believed him with just a single proof when the whole world was against him. The death of such an individual would definitely make Boruto fall into the shackles of despair and darkness. It would impact Sarada in a similar manner which could persuade her to go rogue alongside Boruto. I also feel like Aida has temporarily lost her all-seeing power which means the duo can escape the village without getting caught. However, the danger of code is still there and reflecting on his Blood Moon Eyes symbolism, he could wreak havoc in Konoha. Once it's Moon aka Boruto will abandon it. I feel like Code's memories have been affected and he sees Boruto as the main target after the omnipotence. So is there any way for Boruto to escape from his friends and enemies along with saving the life of his master? I feel like he would learn to switch dimensions for the sake of protecting himself and his supporters. It seems like Momoshiki will teach him to do so. If Kawaki has actually harmed Sasuke, then the only way to save his life would be to travel to another realm. Think about it. How would Boruto take the cape and sword of Sasuke? in front of these homicidal people. It's certainly some safe place where he will be given these mementos. Another thing which needs to be noted is that Boruto is not wearing the headband in the opening sequence. This could be a hint that he will give up on all the hopes when it comes to getting his original life back. But the Jogun which has some direct ties with the divine beings could help him tackle this unexpected situation. Finally, let's hop onto the most unreal theory. What if this cloak that Boruto is wearing does not belong to Sasuke? It could be that it's a moment of either Kaushin Koji or Code. The Code scenario is pretty less likely to happen Happen. However, Kaushin Koji giving Boruto his stuff is not out of question, mainly because he is the only setup that could train Boruto during these unexpected times. He has a lot of intel about Amado and his Osutsuki missions. He was even regarded as the star of change by Ishiki. This could mean he will play a vital role in changing Boruto's destiny back to normal. That's why the cloak belonging to him is pretty plausible. As for the sword, if Sasuke does not recognize Boruto even after the headband incident, I feel like it's gonna be Sarada who will provide Boruto the sword of Sasuke and maybe even the cape. It would help him to keep his identity hidden after going rogue. Finally, considering another major hint of Kishimoto, which has teased the death of Sasuke. The relationship of him and Boruto has been inspired from Piccolo and Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. Piccolo had once sacrificed his own life for saving Gohan, so it's very likely that Boruto and Sasuke's legacy will have a similar end. The way Boruto is losing everything from the last three chapters, it seems like he has been cursed by somebody's evil eye. Find out more about this theory in this video and don't forget the chaos store from the description. We'll see you next time.